Hello, my name is Rob Jones. I'm a medical oncologist in Glasgow. Uh, and I was taking part in a session at the bladder meeting um, uh, specifically about advanced upper tract urothelial cancer. So remember uh, that we tend to talk about bladder cancer, but of course urothelial cancers are about 5% of new diagnoses are actually from the upper tract rather than from the bladder. Um, and in fact, it's about 15 or even 20% of cases of metastatic disease arise in the upper tract. Um, and so we tend to treat them the same at the moment, uh, certainly from an oncological perspective in, in, in in, in metastatic disease, we, we, we treat these cases the, the same regardless of the site of the primary tumour. Um, and there's reasonably good evidence with chemotherapy that they respond in much the same way. That's been formally looked at in um, uh, an analysis of subgroups from different trials over the years. Um, and it also seems to be the same with the newer cytotoxic type treatments such as in Fortumab for Dotin. Um, there's been a little bit more... Um, Toing and froing, I suppose, about whether or not upper tract tumours respond in the same way as lower tract bladder tumours do to immunotherapy. Um, if we look again at the trials, which have all included these patients, there's no significant difference in terms of um, the, 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 seemingly the benefits looking at subgroup analyses. But there is some biological evidence that they might be different. Um, so, for example, we know that upper tract cancers are a specific problem of patients with inherited Lynch syndrome. And of course, that predisposes to microsatellite instability. Um, and we know that microsatellite instability predicts effectiveness of immunotherapy. Indeed, in North America, uh, pembrolizumab is licensed for patients with microsatellite instability, uh, high microsatellite instability, uh, regardless of the origin of the tumour. Um, so that suggests that maybe upper tract tumours may be more responsive uh, to immunotherapy. But that as I said, that doesn't really seem to come out in the, in, in, in the wash, if you like. Um, and in fact, when you look at the molecular profiling of upper tract tumours, yes, the Lynch patients may be more likely to, um, may, may, be more, may, 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 may have other predictors of responsiveness, but the non-Lynch patients, actually the molecular profiling rationale would be that these patients may be slightly less likely to respond to immunotherapy. So it's, a, it's an area of uncertainty, but it may yet lead to some difference in the way we treat these patients. Now, in particular relevance here is if we then translate this through into the perioperative or particularly the adjuvant setting. Now, of course, um, the, we, we now have the positive Checkmate 274 trial, which was for adjuvant nivolumab, and that was in patients with both bladder and upper tract primaries. Um, and about 20% of the patients had upper tract primaries. Um, now, if you look at the subgroup analyses there, there's not a statistically significant difference, but there is a, there is a, a suggestion that maybe the upper tract patients are, do, do, do not benefit in the same way from adjuvant nivolumab. Um, and of course, we've got to also consider that the control arm of that trial was placebo, whereas, of course, the standard of care in upper tract tumour is adjuvant platinum-based combination chemotherapy as established by the PALT trial. So I have concerns about assuming that upper tract tumours will benefit in the same way from adjuvant immunotherapy in the same way that they potentially do with bladder cancer. Finally, there is, uh, I think there's going to be increasing divergence in the way we treat these patients, at least in the perioperative setting, because of course, the standard of care in bladder cancer is very clearly neoadjuvant chemotherapy for muscle invasive disease. Whilst that can sometimes be de delivered in upper tract tumours, uh, there's no level one evidence for it in upper tract tumours. And of course, it's actually quite difficult to get full preoperative staging and histology in upper tract disease. So sometimes it's actually quite difficult to identify patients for neoadjuvant chemotherapy prior to nephroeurotorectomy. So I think we do need to now be thinking more seriously about how we treat these patients as a, as a, as a unique entity in that muscle invasive perioperative setting.